in truth. Okay. All egos are self-centered. Fundamentally self-centered, selfish. Until full liberation, that it is still self-centeredness. Even the kind people, they're just less self-centered, still self-centered. As long as you consider yourself a body-mind, you will be fundamentally self-centered. Because when it comes down to it, you will need, you will have a need to protect your body and mind above, all, above everyone else, or above, you, you'll need to protect the body-minds of those nearest and dearest to you, your family or your tribe. This is why, typically, you care more about a broken fingernail than you do about the plight of a whole race of people on the other side of the world who are being slaughtered. And if you think about how distressed we as human beings get, get about various things, if somebody at work says, about, says something rude to you, or if you stub your toe, you know, or something that's relatively minor happens to you, it can aggravate you a lot more than when you hear of some kind of genocide that's happening on the other side of the world. This is the nature of the mind. All minds are fundamentally, let's say, bad. Now, you might know some very lovely people, but I'm telling you, you might think you're very lovely yourself, you're a very nice person, but if you look at it, Fundamentally, you'll see you're ultimately self-centered. Now, don't take my word for this. See if you think this is true. I'm very happy if you don't agree with me. I'm very happy if you don't agree with me. I want, what I want you to do is hear what I've said to you with an open mind and then think about it for yourself and say, is, this, is what Tom's saying actually true? I don't want you to just believe me. Think about it. Because you'll realize the only goodness there really is, is the self. And the self is devoid of mind. There is no mind in the self. There is no ego in the self. There is no ignorance in the self. So until liberation, all of Maya is self-centered or bad. Rude. The whole of Maya is rude. The entirety of Maya is offensive. Everyone's mind is rude. Everybody's mind is, is offensive. One of the most offensive things is to take yourself to be separate. It's a total, utter insult to God, to what you truly are. Total insult. And you are doing that every day. Why? Because we're a victim of our conditioning. That, that ties in with something I heard um, on, a, on a podcast. Um, there's a translation of, of the word metanoia from the Bible, the Greek. Um, and uh, the, the chap, the, the father, friend, was he Francisco? Uh, I don't know, father, Francisco. whoever he was. Franciscan yeah he he said it's a mistranslation that when Jesus said repent repent the way it shouldn't have been translated as repent it the correct translation is move beyond the mind so I thought that was nice but so metanoia. yeah it's the, I did it's I did hear same. that years ago I remember looking into the metanoia thing because meta means change doesn't it or it means to go beyond like trans means like to go beyond metanoia. Yes, so it's the same. It's the, it, every question we ask here in satsang, it's the same. It's the same answer. It, there's <laughs> go beyond the mind. What's the original sin? Sin oh, means what duality. is what is wrong. Duality. You know, if we talk about good and evil. 
The original sin is the birth of evil. You see? And when we remove sin, there's just pure goodness. What is good? God. God is good. Bhagavan is good. Self is good. Guru is good. Guru means self. Not name and form. This is the only goodness. Now, in Who Am I? Bhagavan Ramana writes, we have to remove both the good thoughts and the bad thoughts. Both the good thoughts and the bad thoughts need to be removed. What he's telling you is that both the good thoughts and the bad thoughts are, from a spiritual point of view, bad. Now, in other places, you'll hear Bhagavan say, use the good thoughts to remove the bad thoughts. And then remove the good thoughts as well. This is true. So relatively speaking, it's good to be good. We encourage people to be kind, to be good, to be nice, to be responsible, to be punctual, to be polite and considerate. Yes, these are all things we encourage, definitely. But then we have, even these are tainted with a subtler, more subtle type of um, negativity. There's still negativity there. There's still egotism there. There's still self-centeredness there. The seeds of evil, the seeds of badness, of negativity are still there. The thing that causes someone to be rude and the thing that causes wars and the things that causes violence, the things that cause abuse between human beings or you know, abuse, abusive behavior, you know, whether it's human to human, human to animal, human to that planet, what causes all this is the ego. The seeds of the ego is thought. The seeds are there in good thoughts and in bad thoughts. You'll see in good thoughts, the seeds of evil actions are there. Even in good thoughts. So this is why Bhagavan says we have to remove both the good and the bad thoughts. To discover the absolute. So maybe you know people who are very nice, very polite, but they're still utterly self-centered. Maybe they just have enough affluence and conditioning to not manifest that outwardly too much, but it's still there. Now, how many people can, can we or can you talk openly about what we're talking about very few why is that it's because most people aren't able to listen really to what's being said right you might have friends who are very nice people really lovely people they're not able to listen they're not able to hear yeah we're not judging but why is that Because it hurts them to listen, from what I've seen. It's too challenging. They, they have to look where it's too painful to look. So that's a part, that's how, that's, this is what causes negative behavior. This is what causes rudeness, is the unwillingness to look. And we can't blame anybody because it's painful to look. So we understand, yes, I can understand why you don't want to look. <laughs> 